What's up, guys? Welcome back to Newswave. Well, that escalated quickly after we talked about the Nintendo Direct rumors information going around. All kinds of stuff started to pop up online. Leaks, rumors, reports. It's absolutely exploded, and I guess we'll go over that here today while we're all kind of hanging out waiting for Nintendo to make that apparent announcement. Also, we are going to be talking about just, a, I mean, a heartbreaking story out of Konami when it comes to Metal Gear Solid 4, and we'll also be going over Final Fantasy 16 and a mode that seems to set everything up for us to play through it multiple times. So if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. We're gonna start today with Hideo Kojima and his plans for the future, specifically for creating games, apparently in space. We can see this posted up over on PC Games N. And this was during a panel where Kojima was talking alongside of Jeff Keighley and sort of a Q&A with plans for the future and what he would like to accomplish. And he says, uh, I want to go to outer space. All right. I want to go to outer space and create a game that you can play in space. Because right now you probably can't play all games in outer space. But I'd play that. So someone please send me up to, to space. All right, you know, I just see headlines now with Kojima, and I just, yeah, okay, uh, sure. I don't even really question it much that he would have said something like this. Okay, why not? Let Kojima go to space. I'm confused. You mean games that you could only play in space, I assume, with zero gravity, or games that we would play here, but it would give us that experience of being in space? Again, it's Kojima, so... Who really knows? Just someone has to front millions and millions of dollars to send them to space, and then we'll find out. Also, we got some good news out of Tango Gameworks when it comes to Ghostwire Tokyo, which we can see this over on Twitter. They say, from everyone at Tango Gameworks, thank you to 5 million fans who have played Ghostwire Tokyo. They have some commemorative artwork here from the concept artist, Kenta Muramatsu. And this is good overall because... The thing with Ghostwire Tokyo is it feels like a game that definitely needs a sequel for a lot of the ideas that it had. It just didn't necessarily capitalize on it or flesh it out completely. Like the idea that the hand symbols and kind of the fighting there with the magic was great, but it did feel fairly shallow, especially later on in the game. And it actually kind of felt like it came to a very abrupt ending and then set you up with this open world that had a lot of same kind of scenario set up across the board and more of a checklist situation. So I would like to see another game, a sequel to Ghostwire Tokyo, and the idea of it being in Game Pass, as you can see here with that 5 million player count, certainly benefited from going into that subs subscription service for people to just sort of try it out. So if they're looking for more and more games to complete a very diverse lineup for Game Pass... I mean, Ghostwire Tokyo is uh, definitely a game that's a bit out there and unique, so here's hoping for a sequel. Oh, and here's an interesting release. We had talked before about Chocobo GP and how Squ Square Enix was shutting that down completely, a live service game that didn't last very long for them. Surprise, surprise. But it appears they've decided to re-release it just as a regular game, which is probably what they should have done in the first place. You, this, you could see, noticed by Nintendial over on Twitter with Square Enix re-released Chocobo GP. That was on June 15th. Like, no one really noticed at all. It has all unlockables in-game, no longer has microtransactions. I think they mentioned removing microtransactions and all of that, but this just sort of feels like they decided, you know, let's, let's just re release the game as a regular game. And in fact, if you have GP Lite, you can purchase the upgrade and transfer your save data over. And again, this is what they should have done in the first place, but I guess they wanted to try the live service route. And I guess at least it wasn't completely lost to time. They were able to essentially revert it back to a regular game. So there you go. If you were curious, but turned off by the microtransactions and the live service aspect, now, it seems like a regular game you can go pick up and play. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with all the rumors, leaks, and reports around this Nintendo Direct, and apparently a ton of games. This might be one of the best Directs ever created uh, from what is getting out there right now. And uh, I, there's a lot of talk from Sean about a disease for the Nintendo Direct, a sickness that's getting out there. People basically just getting excited for something that hasn't been announced yet. Although I guess... A lot of people have been kind of pushing the idea of a Direct for quite some time now. However, you can kind of feel like, okay, a little different right now. And in fact, any time now we could have that announcement. And it typically happens 
about an hour after Newswave goes up. So who knows, by the time you're watching this today, it might already have happened. But I figured we would take a look at some of the stuff that's being talked about currently, one of which includes Atlas because why not? I mean, you can see this <laughs> over on Twitter, someone capturing the screenshot of an unlisted trailer for Persona 3 Reload, and it it has the Switch uh, text in there for the different platforms that it's coming to. And this is just, again, it's just Atlas. It's, it's what they do. But I will point out, because people are like, oh, this obviously means Persona 3 Reload is going to be in this reported direct the only thing with that is in the card at the end of the trailer, there is no Switch logo, and it does make me think that this could have been one of the most Atlas things ever. Whoever posted the video, social media manager or anything, just kind of copy and pasted from Persona 5 Tactica, the different platforms, and didn't realize that Switch was in there. Then they went back and removed that Switch text. Then we also have talks around a couple of games that could be in this direct from Pyro Row and... Uh, the so apparently this Twitter account has guessed stuff right in the past. I've seen this play out with Waddle D knows and, and all this where they can post a bunch of stuff, delete things that they're right before. So they start trolling later, but this made the rounds again and we'll see where this has kind of evolved to, but they mentioned a new 2D Mario Brothers, which I don't think is uh, very hard to predict. But the other one's interesting a remake of a Super Nintendo classic. I initially thought it would have been uh, maybe something fun like uh, an, an RPG, an HD 2D setup from Square, and that's still very possible here. But uh, now it's at, it's go gone completely out there, and some are even expecting a Chrono Trigger remake with Zippo speaks throwing that out there. But it seemed like there was talks about it being Square Enix in general, so. I don't know, take your best guess on that one. Oh, and I guess we can quickly touch on the Shin Megami Tensei 5 Complete Edition. This was teased in a kind of an over-the-top fashion here by uh, Exune. And this is over on a Chinese forum. And they, they, uh, they have actually gotten several things right in the past. And in this case, they set up for the concert with the background shifting back and forth to some text that translates to complete edition. And yeah, I expect Shin Megami Tensei 5 to go to other platforms like PlayStation and probably PC because it was in the NVIDIA leak list. And once again, I don't think you should really go against that list, not with what it's proven in the past. But this might be my favorite one of all. And it kind of shows where we are with the hype and speculation, all these trains running together. This is posted up by Rob on Twitter and it was pulled because in the background, there's a Nintendo Switch logo on the right for advertising behind home plate. Then on the left, Nintendo logo and Mario holding up a bat, which uh, people then took to mean that Nintendo accidentally, I guess, ran the ad early and it's for a new Mario baseball game. I'm, I'm serious. Now, first of all, <laughs> The, the, the funny thing is Nintendo is technically involved with the Seattle Mar Mariners, I believe, since they own, I feel like they own like 10% of that team. This is an interesting fact there, yeah, but uh, it's also possible that Nintendo just wants to theme Mario, a render that they already have around, you know, baseball, because it's, it's, in, a, it's in a baseball stadium. So that, to me, that seems pretty straightforward. Although, sure, I guess it's possible. It's the last real sports game they would need on the Switch to complete like the entire series. So why not go ahead and do a Mario baseball game? It would make sense. But I guess at least people are excited and that's never led to disappointment on the internet. But one thing's for sure, we'll kind of hang out, wait to see if Nintendo does have it direct to announce. And we'll see if Sean starts feeling better out of nowhere, breaks out the crystal ball and has his Nintendo Direct Predictions ready suspiciously early later on today. We'll see. Next up, let's talk about Konami and a, kind of a frustrating story looking back on it, mostly for current preservation and just availability of this title. And that's Metal Gear Solid 4. This is a game that's still trapped on the PlayStation 3. Technically, you can play it on PC with some oddities thrown in there through emulation, but officially it's only ever been released on that PlayStation 3 console. However, it looks like Konami at least played around with the idea of it being on the Xbox 360 as well. Now this we can see posted up over on Time Extension, and this is part of Stephen L. Kent in his Ultimate History of Video Games Volume 2, while talking with 
former Kojima production staffer Ryan Payton about the process of Metal Gear Solid 4 being ported to the Xbox 360 during development. Says, despite how downtrodden my colleagues were with developing on PS3, now that referencing the PS3 being notoriously difficult to create for, specifically for the cell processor, and to my understanding, some of the poor documentation from Sony around it, uh, saying most of them were still hardcore Sony fans and were not in favor of spending resources on such a test, this referencing the Xbox 360. They believe Metal Gear Solid 4 would look and run terribly on Microsoft's older and inferior hardware. One fateful day, the Konami R&D team hosted a meeting where we got to see the fruits of their labor, Metal Gear Solid 4 running beautifully and smoothly on an Xbox 360. As one of the few unabashed Xbox fans in the office, I was excited. So if they had the game running on the Xbox 360 during development alongside of the PS3 version, why didn't it come out on that platform? Because apparently there was no deal with Sony to make this exclusive for the PS3. Well, apparently it had to do with uh, the amount of DVDs that it would have to ship on to be feasible in the Xbox 360. Remember, versus the Blu-ray, which Metal Gear Solid 4 did ship on a dual, rare, dual layer Blu-ray at 50 gigabytes. I mean, you kind of do the math. It would take quite a few DVDs for that to function on the Xbox 360. Even if they went like dual layer there, it'd still be uh, four or five, maybe six. And that's if it had to be 50 gigabytes, because to my understanding, Metal Gear Solid 4 is not that large. Uh, from what I've seen, ripping it from a Blu-ray, it's like 30 gigabytes or so. And after it had come out, there was a patch that was pushed to where you didn't have to do those installs, depending on where you were in the game. It would just all install at once. And I've seen people talking about it range from 10, 15 gigabytes or so, and really, if you look at Metal Gear Solid 4 when it came out in the first place, it kind of mirrored having to change out the disc and install. Anyway, now I think this is as is described here early on in the story. They were more on board with Sony and the PlayStation 3 just because of the overall tone and the way that people at that studio saw the Xbox 360, which Xbox has never been very big in Japan. And when they were deciding between the two, Despite the struggles of the cell processor in the PS3, they still wanted to go with Sony's console. But the reason this is so unfortunate is because it probably would be backwards compatible right now on the Xbox One, the Xbox Series, if it had released on the Xbox 360. Because the HD collection is backwards compatible, I figured that would also probably follow suit. And you would have at least two, three, what, Peace Walker, and four available right now on the Xbox Series probably upscaled to 4K, maybe an FPS boost. But here we are now still hoping that Konami will just do a full on port. At least we know based on the story, it is possible and it's not necessarily due to it completely being developed for the cell processor as they were able to make it work on the Xbox 360 setup as well. Next up, let's talk about Microsoft and their view on the current VR market and if it's even worth them jumping in when it comes to gaming to maybe compete with the PlayStation VR 2 and soon to be MetaQuest 3. Well, this was in an interview with Hollywood Reporter and Matt Booty. We can see this posted up, transcribed over here by VGC saying, I think for us, it's just a bit of wait until there's an audience there. We're very fortunate we have, we've we've got these big IPs that have turned into ongoing franchises with big communities. We have 10 games that have achieved over 10 million players life to date, which is a pretty big accomplishment, but there's that's the kind of scale that we need to see success for the game. And it's just it's not quite there yet with augmented reality or virtual reality. And if you consider the fact that Sony told us that around 600,000 PSVR 2 units had shipped out in the first six weeks, it does make me wonder, as you kind of saw that chart leveling out a bit, if they would be able to sell 10 million headsets. Now, Microsoft has played around with HoloLens as an overall company, not necessarily in the gaming division. So they're familiar with augmented reality and it's possible that it catches on more and more now that Apple's broken into the scene, but even that seems like it's potentially a decade away based on how expensive uh, their newest AR headset is currently. So in this instance, Microsoft just needs to get things figured out when it comes to creating games. Like just Get games out there like Starfield that looks like it's building up to be their generational release and then follow it up with consistency. Then maybe they can look around at VR or AR if it catches on. Because right now, I will admit with Sony, 
doesn't feel like VR2 or PSVR2 has continued any kind of momentum it may have had at launch. We're still kind of waiting for some big time releases to come out that really captures the mainstream. So in Microsoft's mind, and I'll play it safe, sit out on the sidelines of the VR until it's able to prove itself. Although I will say, if given the option from a consumer side, I would prefer Microsoft to jump in as well, just to try to get that, that sector kickstarted a bit more with competition and just more games, because right now that's what VR needs, is just more interest. And with Microsoft and Sony pushing along with Meta, that maybe could get VR going, because it just seems to be struggling still, even with a lot of money and a big company like Meta and a big company like Sony really pushing it. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about some new details for Final Fantasy 16. This though, talking more about the post credits after you beat the game, what is there for you to do? Well, take a look. This was a screen capture from Genki over on Twitter talking about Final Fantasy mode. And this is basically the, the new game plus mode. And it's a hard mode you can access after completing the game. So there'll be higher enemy levels. Your level cap is raised all the way up to 100. The ultimate weapon is available for crafting, level, possessions, abilities, all that are carried over and a gold trophy for completion. It's interesting though, that the ultimate weapon is basically locked behind completing the game once and then going back through on New Game Plus. But if the enemies are stronger, you probably need that ultimate weapon anyway. And that's always the really fun part about Final Fantasy is finding the ultimate weapon or ultimate weapons uh, as you go through because it just makes you feel incredibly powerful. And I guess going through New Game Plus, again, where you'll have stronger enemies, it makes sense to try to feel even more powerful than your initial normal or maybe even easy uh, play through there, but it just feels like more and more information that we've been getting around Final Fantasy 16 has been making it sound better and better, but tomorrow we're really going to find out because that's when the Metacritic score drops along with a bunch of reviews, impressions, and thoughts from independent outlets and not just Square Enix obviously trying to sell us on the game, but I mean, we've been able to play the demo. Thought it was pretty good, so I'm looking forward to this game when it releases at the end of this week. And good to know that there is quite a bit to do, seemingly, even after you beat the game. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're going to take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I ask, if a game has New Game Plus, do you play through the game again using it right away? Oh, 5% of you are completionists saying, yeah, restart it and play through it again for that completion. Maybe the platinum trophy, the thousand gamer score on Xbox, 65% say only if I really like the game, 30% say no. When I beat a game, I don't play, I don't play through it again right away. I will admit now I'm more likely to just go to the next game after I beat a title rather than go back through for completion sake or new game plus. Whereas back in the day when I got like two or three games a year, I would, I would definitely do New Game Plus, and I, at times, beat that game multiple times to get as much time out of it as I could. Although, I will admit, now even sometimes, New Game Plus can be a lot of fun, especially when you start up with all your abilities from the end game, from the previous playthrough, your weapons, your accessories, and you just kind of blast through all the enemies early on in the game. So that part, yeah, it can be a lot of fun. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day, as you're seeing here. This is from Autumn saying, what's your honest take on DLC spawn? Despite the monetary factor, do you enjoy coming back to IPs or does it feel cumbersome in a day and age carefully timed release cadence? So this is interesting because it brings up the, uh, the argument of how far out from a game's release do you have to wait for downloadable content? Because there are times where It'll be a year or two, I'll go back to the game and I've completely forgotten how to play it. I have to relearn it, spend like the first hour just remembering how everything worked, whether it's combos in an action game or even just full on setups or storylines in an RPG. So in that instance, provided everything's on the up and up and things aren't held back, I don't mind getting DLC that's legitimate and like sizable a month or two after the full game comes out. But of course, there's always that thought that things were held back for that downloadable content. It's just such a tightrope to walk if you're a publisher or developer as to when you release this. But to me, if it's legitimately good downloadable content and it feels like it's worth buying, even if it's pretty close to release, I would still check it out. But let me know, would you rather wait a year or two to get the content or get it as close to release as possible? And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Where's all the Nintendo Direct talk, the hype, the rumors, 
What do, you, what do you hope to see here, and what would you think about that Super Nintendo Classic remake? Then also, what about Metal Gear Solid 4? Could have been on the Xbox 360, but Konami decided no because of too many DVDs. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.